From the earliest moments following Darth Vader's defeat to Obi-Wan Kenobi on Mustafar, Vader was obsessed with enacting his revenge against his former Jedi Master. As the Rise and Fall of Darth Vader novel explains, as Vader was literally dragging his almost lifeless body up the bank of Mustafar's lava river, it was only his hatred for Obi-Wan that made him want to carry on living. Without his desire for vengeance against Obi-Wan, Vader's story could have easily ended on Mustafar. But of course, the story of Vader continued, and while the Sith Lord would eventually learn to accept his place within the Dark Side and as Darth Sidious's Sith Apprentice, his desire to overthrow his master and assume the power inherent within the mantle of Dark Lord of the Sith, now being an important reason for his continuing to live after Episode 3, his desire for vengeance against the Jedi was still undeniably present for Vader. And at the top of Vader's list was vengeance against Jedi Master Obi-Wan Kenobi. In the earliest months of the Empire, the Purge comic demonstrates just how driven Vader was to destroy Obi-Wan and avenge his defeat on Mustafar. We looked at it briefly in our previous video, but the mere rumor that Obi-Wan was present on the planet of Kessel caused Vader to fall into a trap set up by Jedi survivors of Order 66, coming extremely close to being killed by them. While Vader's need to hunt down every last remaining Jedi that was so obvious in the Dark Lord novel and comics like Purge and Dark Times did dissipate as he focused on matters of the Dark Side and Empire, he nevertheless retained the burning desire to hunt down and finally eliminate Obi-Wan. The novel Death Star makes it clear that Vader's obsession with Obi-Wan wasn't merely a thought that consumed him in the earliest days after Mustafar. It was carried by him throughout the Imperial Era, decades later in the years immediately preceding the events of Episode 4. Vader didn't need any confirmation that Obi-Wan survived during the years that separated Episode 3 and Episode 4, as the Sith Lord would have felt Obi-Wan's death through the Force, who he still saw as his nemesis. And for Vader, this was a good thing, as he wanted to be the one to strike the Jedi Master down, granting him the revenge he wanted for what Obi-Wan did to Anakin Skywalker. All of this would cause us to assume that Vader was completely confident in a potential confrontation with Obi-Wan a second time. That his defeat on Mustafar was a fluke, a wrong that could easily be remedied simply if Vader only had a second chance. However, despite all of the evidence that exists within the Legends lore of Vader's confidence and his actions that showed he would truly stop at nothing to face Obi-Wan again, in reality, there existed a hidden truth within Vader that he doubted himself, and at some level, worried about a potential rematch against his former master whenever that day finally came, wondering if he could actually defeat the Jedi Master. Now, given what Obi-Wan was able to do to Vader on Mustafar, not just defeating him, but leaving him with gruesome injuries and reliant upon cybernetics to sustain his life, it might not appear to be too surprising that Vader experienced some doubt. While this is certainly true, some residual fear of Obi-Wan stands in stark contrast to actions and statements seen from Vader elsewhere within the lore. This is the Vader who roughly two decades before their second duel on the Death Star exploded into a room of more than half a dozen Jedi simply for a chance to find Obi-Wan. Not only that, but Vader had years of experience in hunting down any and all Jedi who were located during the era of the Empire, where Vader was the one with the fearsome reputation. To see Vader express doubt and worry about confronting a Jedi, even if Obi-Wan, is unique for a character who is able to find any answer necessary through the dark side. And yet, the moment where Vader would admit his doubt was revealed in the Death Star novel after the duel had already erupted between the Sith Lord and the Jedi Master. After the opening strikes of the duel, Vader could feel the Force was still very much with Obi-Wan, causing him to understand that the Jedi was still dangerous, able to anticipate his attacks. Recognizing the power of Obi-Wan, Vader acknowledged he'd always carried a trace of doubt that he might lose to Obi-Wan again in this exact moment. And it's here where we see the first reason why Vader would admit the presence of this uncertainty, which is perfectly in line with the Legends lore. Vader wasn't blind to the fact that he'd been certain he couldn't lose to Obi-Wan years earlier on Mustafar. By all metrics, Vader, even when he'd been Anakin Skywalker, saw himself as a stronger and simply better duelist than Obi-Wan even then. Vader had surpassed his master, and still, he'd been defeated. As the rise and fall of Darth Vader novel makes clear, Vader thought it was impossible to imagine Obi-Wan possessing the strength to defeat him. And even after he'd been left to die on the banks of the Lava River, Vader was still certain he was stronger than Obi-Wan. While Vader did eventually see some of this as youthful arrogance, the fact remained. He was more powerful than Obi-Wan during their second duel, but that had been true decades earlier and he still lost. So the same result could very well happen again. 
I also think that some of this comes down to what we discussed in a recent video regarding Obi-Wan's use of the Form 3 lightsaber combat form known as Sarisu. As we discussed in that video, Form 3 was the most offensive of the combat forms used by the Jedi, where its focus on defense allowed many true masters of it to be considered invincible, where the Jedi Battlemaster Sindralig could declare before the Clone War that no Jedi who truly mastered the form had ever been defeated. Because Form 3 allowed Jedi to prolong duels as long as was necessary, it preyed upon a Sith Lord's reliance upon emotions. And in the case of Vader on Mustafar, Obi-Wan's Form 3 was extremely powerful in this regard. As the duel progressed, Vader was more and more consumed by his own rage, where Obi-Wan concluded his former apprentice was completely blinded by fury, focused more on defeating Obi-Wan than defending himself. I believe Vader understood these aspects as well, where Obi-Wan's style and ability to prey upon the powerful emotions Vader experienced when confronting his former master factored into why Vader doubted himself and questioned his chances in a rematch with Obi-Wan. It wasn't merely that Vader knew the outcome of the previous duel and the fact that he should have won given his advantages in strength and ability. Vader also knew the tactics that resulted in Obi-Wan's victory and adjusted accordingly. This is perfectly described in the Death Star novel during the duel between them. At numerous times, Vader didn't allow himself to be driven deeper and deeper into his dark side emotions. For example, when Obi-Wan began taunting Vader by referring to him by his Sith title of Darth, Vader consciously didn't allow himself to be baited and kept himself focused on Obi-Wan's attacks, something that was less and less of a concern for him during their first duel on Mustafar. Vader was also far more patient, for when he was about to deliver a final flurry of strikes, he reset when Obi-Wan quickly counter-attacked unexpectedly, demonstrating he wasn't willing to take unnecessary risks to achieve victory as soon as possible, as had been his downfall in the first duel. I believe all of this was borne out of Vader's unique doubt that he carried into the second duel with Obi-Wan, knowing there was a real danger for him to be defeated a second time. But regardless, Vader's early arrogance and obsession that pushed him to seek out vengeance against Obi-Wan evolved into a far more reserved Vader by Episode 4. Because he worried about the abilities of his former master, the second duel was far different than the first. A necessary transformation given the result of the first duel, Vader being defeated despite being the stronger duelist, and Obi-Wan's tactics that left him victorious on Mustafar. So there we have it, the moment Vader admitted how dangerous Obi-Wan was in their second duel in Episode 4. Thank you very much to all of the Patreon members of Star Wars Reading Club, as your support is so greatly appreciated. You can find all of our social media links and a link to our Star Wars gaming channel in the description below for updates and even more Star Wars content. We love making these videos, so why not subscribe for more fun Star Wars theories and discussions. Also, if you enjoyed the video, think about giving a like or leaving a comment. If not for me... For not knowing he was this dangerous.